Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, in regard to your last question and the, and the response, I, I just uh, took a meeting a few minutes ago with the upcoming commander of the 12th Air Force uh, in, at Davis Monthan Air Force Base, and he was talking about uh, having to stand down um, pilot training for three months. And I asked him for what the ratio of uh, uh, standing down to lack of readiness looked like. He said it's at least two to one. You know, three months down, you're going to have six months to get back up to speed. So I, we're already doing irreparable harm, I believe, to our readiness by having to, to take these actions. I think uh, I want to talk about something a little bit different in regard to uh, how sequestration is affecting our our current and future force. Uh, I think Chairman Keehan stated it quite well when he said that within this committee there is an acute awareness of what this is doing to us. Uh, but with our colleagues who are also facing their challenges in other committees, not so much. In fact, in many cases not at all. And across the country, the American people really don't get this yet. Um, so, uh, but our regional commanders know, uh, as do our local commanders, and they cite all the time the adverse consequences that sequestration is having on morale and is having an effect, morale effect, also on military spouses and families. You know, I've, uh, I grew up in an Air Force family. Uh, we never saw anything like this, uh, indiscriminate cuts that just absolutely make no sense. Uh, and so we ha I have no personal experience with it. But I, over the last several weeks and months, I've met with a lot of families and military men and women at Fort Huachuca in Arizona, at Davis Monthan, at the 162nd Air National Guard. And almost to a person, they reflect morale is really declining. And then I talk to businesses in those communities, and they are affected, obviously, by the lower buying power. People don't want to buy things when there is uncertainty. So I want to ask this question, um, uh, Mr. Secretary. Uh, given the current fiscal constraints and the negative impact that sequestration is having on morale of both service members and their families, uh, how will the military, and I, I think we also know that our service members are often some of our best assets when it comes to recruitment. How is the Department ensuring that recruitment to meet our future needs is being sustained in a time like this? I mean, I, surely it has to have had an effect or an anticipated effect. Well, we're, uh, we're monitoring that very carefully. Uh, the, uh, we count on having the best people of any military in the world. Uh, so, and it's, since it's an all volunteer force, we have to look at the labor markets and see, are we going to be able to recruit and retain the kind of people we need? Uh, we're doing okay so far. Uh, I think the morale change uh, might have an effect on us, and we're watching that. Uh, so also does the overall economic uh, situation, labor markets in general. And so also, as far as retention is concerned, is the quality of service life. If you joined, uh, because you want to be a tip-top in your military profession, and you're not allowed to train this year, you're just not allowed to sit around because we don't have the money to let you train, that's very dispiriting for people. And that's the kind of thing that will make them leave. Uh, so I am very concerned about that. I, I, this is something that is so concerning to us that we watch it very closely. It, it's very concerning to me, but I, I, I want to ask Admiral Winnefeld if he has anything to add to that, because uh, this is something that really cuts to the heart for us. Now, sir, I think you're asking a very good question, because as, as Deputy uh, says, at the moment, perhaps because of the job market, uh, what have you, um, we're doing okay recruiting and retention-wise. But it's a complex animal. And there's no question in our mind that as, as the readiness of the force declines, that, that these people aren't going to be doing what they came in to do, and they're going to be less inclined to stay. Some of them will stay anyway, uh, but uh, there will be less inclination to stick around. And the, the, the real morale piece, I wouldn't say the morale of the force is terrible right now. Our young men and women are doing great. But uh, this has introduced a, a level of uncertainty in their lives as to, to whether they're going to have a future. And I, sometimes I'll talk to audiences, and I'll look, I'll look at them, and I'll say, look, if uh, look, if, if look to your left and look to your right. If, if we can't uh, uh, agree that we can uh, absorb a slower rate of increase of compensation, then one of you guys is going to be gone in a couple of years, uh, assuming we're allowed to do that. Uh, so uh, they are, there is some uncertainty out there uh, in their lives. Well, let me just comment in the remaining time in regard to my earlier conversation with, uh, with the general. 
He's told me that re-upping is also becoming a problem. Men and women who are trained to fly potentially F-22 are saying they don't want to continue. That is a tremendous impact, negative impact on our future readiness. And I appreciate all you are doing to try to make us manage this through. I hope Congress will come to its senses and find a better way. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back.